What's up guys, this is Quadron. We're uh, coming at you live in a Dota 2 pub match. This is a high level game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the teams. We've got Natural as the Disruptor, Nova as the Silencer, uh, SSJ3 is battle. still picking a hero, Capjack is the Sniper, and uh, we got Asidoran as the Tinker. And we've got Exelstor as the Shadow Demon. Pringles as the Lone Druid. Eldid, Elnid, Keeper of the Light. Fingushkatka. And Yavananen. Anyway, so guys, I just wanted to do, uh, a lot of you I know are not going to be familiar with Dota. So I'm going to be kind of explaining the basics of the game. So this is your fountain right here. Regeneration. You can regenerate your, uh, regenerate your health and life at the fountain. You can, uh, you, you have five on five. Dota is a five on five brawler, as at least that's what I call it. It's a brawler strategy game. And each team picks five heroes, and each hero has its own special abilities and strengths and weaknesses. So, for example, Tinker, he can use a laser. Well, Shadow Demon here can basically disrupt you and send you to a, like another world and cause you to make two illusions of yourself uh, that he can control. And damage you in. So, and each one has at least four abilities usually. Some of them are passive sometimes, so you don't always get to use them in the game. But, because uh, some, like, some of them just like basically boost your stats or abilities, like Omni Knight here, he's got like D-Gen Aura, and so it's not really technically an ability he can use. And uh, so basically, let me break down the map for you really quick while these guys are going. Uh, if you look in the bottom left corner here, you can see the mini map, which represents the whole thing here. On the bottom here, you've got the Radiant side, which is the girl of the green trees and all that stuff. And in the middle of the Radiant side, you've got the Ancient. Radiant's Ancient. And this is basically the thing that needs to be destroyed for Dire, which is the other team, to win. So you're defending your Ancient, and the other team is trying to destroy the other person's Ancient. So this is Dire's Ancient. So it's Radiant versus the Dire. And uh, so you've got these, little, again, look at the bottom mini-map here. We've got the bottom lane right here, the middle lane, and then the top lane. Dyer's and as far as lanes go, the attack. only thing you really need to know is that the bottom lane for the Radiant is longer. You can see the distance is really far. And then the, the bottom lane for the Dyer is shorter, which basically just means that the creeps end up getting closer to the Radiant Tower most of the time, which makes it easier for the Radiant to farm, as well as the fact that you can pull creeps right here. And that's also, that's really important. Because um, you can pull the creep, the, the neutral creeps right here, which you can you can farm these to get gold, and you can pull them into the creep wave and make your tower safer for your carry. So usually the carry is in for the Radiant's in the bottom lane, and usually the carry for the Dire is in the top lane. And so, you guys are probably wondering, carries? What are what are carries? Um, I don't know what carry is. So, basically, there's different roles you can play in Dota. You can play like a carry role where you, basically, at the end of the game, you're you're expected to have a lot of items, a lot of gold, and the items that you get are the items you need to basically have your team win the game. And you, so you should be able to kill players really effectively and easily. And usually, you want at least one player to be really farmed. Possibly two, maybe even three, depending on if you have a jungler. Uh, like usually, you want one person in each lane to be getting all of the last hits. So really, you can get at least three people who are decently farmed, and uh, maybe even four if you've got one jungler. But the trick with that is if you end up going with one person in the jungle, killing these neutral creeps, then that leaves one person in a lane by himself, which can be good because he gets all the golden experience. But that also means they can potentially die uh, easier, especially if they're going up and it's 2 1. So, just taking a look at this lane, let's go ahead and break it down a little bit. We've got a Keeper of the Light and a Bounty Hunter. And then we've got an Omni Knight and a Silencer. Now, the Keeper of the Light has the ability to just spam crazy and do an illusion. Uh, he just got killed. In my and, uh, First blood, last basically what happened there, <laughs> Silencer cursed him, and then he has to cast a spell Radiant's before he can actually uh, remove the curse, basically, is kind of the idea. And Keeper of the Light didn't have time to cast a spell, so he ended up just dying to it. 
And here's the Bounty Hunter. And Bounty Hunter is the ability to cloak, which is really, really handy. He's almost gonna die here. He doesn't have enough mana to cloak, he needs 50. Shadow Walk, and he couldn't. And here, last word uh, is what he just used. And he silenced them, and enchantment expires when the Sovereign Target. So, and he does damage if he's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good spell. Basically, he does damage whenever he casts, I think. Yeah, if they cast a spell, it'll damage them if they cast it within the time frame. Um, anyway, Silencer's a really good hero for basically going against mana or spell heavy uh, units because basically it shuts down their mana regen and their life, and so it forces them back usually. So Silencer's doing really well. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the last hits. Now, Life Stealer, he's going to be. Life Stealer is. Right here. He's got the most last hits, though. That is Jungle Creeps, so it is, you can get more Jungle Creeps in because you're fighting Jungle Creeps than you can in a normal lane. Uh, depending, but oftentimes. Because you get like 3 and 1 right here, as you can see. Um, so, the middle lane looks like just Tinker in here. Shadow Demon's Not off somewhere like. else. Not sure where. Oh, Shadow Demon died, but. like Looks like Tinker killed him. Um, so, this is the March of the Machines that Tinker does. It's usually used to just kill the Creep Wave. And, uh, it's basically, Dota is a really competitive game that requires lots of knowledge of how the game works to be able to become really good at it. Oh, uh, Disruptor <laughs> almost died. Look at that. 100 life left. Um, looks like the Lone Druid got away. No, he did not. Lone Druid died there. Dyer's bottom tower uh, is under sweet. attack. Pretty nice by uh, the Disruptor. Sni I bet it was the Sniper that killed him. What's here? No, the Disruptor killed him. Okay. Disruptor had a double kill. Um, it was Omni Knight. What he just did there is he healed himself. And so he's kind of like a priest. And he has the ability to heal people Dyer's as well as repel them, which makes attack. them invincible to uh, magic damage and spells. So it's it's a really good he's a really good support hero. Okay, so let's talk about roles. I talked about a carry role, but there's all kinds of different roles. There's no! good job at Bounty Hunter there. This is the disruption field. It prevents distance. you from leaving that area. Um, all right, so let's talk about roles. You've got your carry role, and you've got your support role, and then you've got a whole mix of roles in between those. So your support role, basically, like this this disruptor right here, is in a support role. He's got an observer ward, uh, or he's got a sentry ward right here, but that's primarily to de ward, um, and or to detect bounty hunter. Um, and that's really important for invisible units. Uh, so supports usually run around the map. You basically protecting the carries. Like this Omni Knight is more of a support, and the Silencer is more of like a semi-carry or a carry. And so Omni Knight ideally allows the Silencer to get the gold, because the Silencer needs those items to be able to kick ass later on. Uh, this Life Stealer, he's kind of, he's more of a carry, but he's jungling. So he's not, he doesn't have to take up a lane, which is really nice. Um, there's some action going on down here. Sniper's in trouble. Bears and tangled him. And the sniper gonna die. Oh, the sniper goes down, but the disruptor is gonna get him. Okay. Uh, nice job, the disruptor there. So, uh, these towers are worth a lot, and basically they help you push back your lane. So, you wanna keep your towers up as long as possible. Um, going back to the different roles. So there's like a support role, and sometimes you'll play more than more than one role. You'll kind of play a semi-carry role as well as a support role sometimes, depending on if you can get good farm and good uh, good gold and good XP going early enough, like with some kills, for example. Um, this uh, there's also the initiator role, and basically the initiator. Oh man, is he in trouble or not? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, basically, the initiator is the one who says, okay, let's fight, and you want to fight on your terms. So, he, he usually gets a blink, jumps in, oh, is he going to get him? His bounty hunter is probably going down. Oh, one more. Oh, no. Oh, he's healed up. Oh, Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon banishes him. Oh, he saves him. No, it was his teammate. He, he banished, uh, 
what's the name of that ability? He Radiance disrupted him into like another world so he couldn't be attacked and was able to regen some health up. Dyer's bottom oh, tower play. is under attack. Tinker, using missiles, zapping, and Oh, he could totally die here. Oh he's still he's the central reward, he's not being hidden. He thinks he is. Okay. Uh oh not not in range there. Sentry wards have a vision of about here, about that big. Um, this is the keeper of the lights that illuminate. It does a lot of damage, and he totally with that. <laughs> totally missed the entire wave and all the heroes. That's just really bad. Oh, we got some action over here. Silencer wants to take on Tinker. Nope, Tylenser and Tinker are on the same team. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> They want to fight! Team Baral! Okay, whatever. Dyer's middle uh, tower is so under So we got attack. the sniper here. And... These guys might try to gank him. If he was able to disrupt him and then the bounty hunter comes in, tracks him, and then also tra uh, shurikens him, that's pretty pretty devastating. We got a life stealer here. Uh, what happened right here? I heard a disruption. See, look at these marching machines. They do so much damage. Look at this guy. He's almost dead already. Oh, he's gone. That was a really bad call by him. Dive there. Uh, diving is when you basically go into enemy territory to try to get a kill. And especially when you go by towers. That's typically when you're diving into the tower uh, attack radius. So you can try to get a kill. Look at that. That knocked the sniper down to half health. That's illuminated by the keeper. Just does so much damage. It does uh, 500 damage at, at full, at full blast. So let's see if he hits him here. He's at 800 health right now. Bam, down to 400 health. That's pretty insane. Um, but the, he does have a ring of regen, so he'll get his health back pretty quick. We got the lone druid running around with his bear. He's gonna go ahead and jungle, get some more of these creeps. Basically. These guys gave quite a bit of gold and experience, and they allow you to basically get more as a team if you have at least one person jungling. Or, if, for example, if your lane's not safe, it allows you to go get get some jungling, uh, XP, and gold while the lane is pushed out towards the enemy tower, and you don't want to risk potentially getting ganked. Uh oh, they're trying to gank the Lord Druid. Oh man, he's in trouble. He's dead. I'm not. Little Omni Knight bash on the head. <laughs> so, I never really talked about farming yet. Oh, good snipe shot. So, the sniper just used his assassinate ability right here, which does 355 damage uh, at level 1 and can go up to 655 damage in one hit, which is pretty huge. This is the illuminate again being spammed, and the keeper has the ability to basically. Set it to go and run away, and he basically changed position. Pretty crazy. Ah, this guy's silenced and disrupted each other. That's pretty funny. Okay. What's going on? Lifestealer, this is a bold move. Going into jungle on the opponent's ancients. These guys just knew what was going on. If they had an observer board, they'd be able to see what was going on up there. And uh, doesn't look like they're going to find out. It looks like Life Stealer's okay so far. But uh, basically, what you want to do is you want to get a gold and XP advantage. Uh, you want to go. So right now, Silencer is leading the way for a network. This guy right here has the most money overall. Life Stealer is number two. He's got a lot of money right there. Oh man, this Life Stealer is so, so beefy. <coughs> Sorry guys. Uh, life Stealer is so beefy when he gets his, basically gets his Life Steal going, and he jumps into uh, into a neutral creep, and hops back out and steals their health. It's, he's, it's pretty gnarly. He's a gnarly looking dude. Look at those teeth. Ugh, nasty. Um, there's bounty hunters kind of searching around, hoping Dyer's to try to find someone jungling. Under attack. He just missed someone, though. The Omni Knight's down here. And, oh, got Sniper. Maybe he's hunting for the Sniper. Now, do these guys have any detection? I don't think they do. 
This is an interesting setup. Looks like they're setting up to try to gank Lone Druid here, which is an important character because the Lone Druid needs Radiant's to get lots of farm to become good. Under attack. And he, right now, is pretty down there in the farm. He does not have that high of a net worth. About 1500 below. The, uh, well, it looks like they just scared off the Lone Druid. It's kind of a huge waste of time by Radiant's team. Not really a good call. And here goes Tinker. He's tink uh, teleporting. He's going to the travel to get across the map. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Okay, they're going to go ahead and pressure. They Dyer's got a tower. That's good. At least they get to use fallen. that uh, time. Now this, this is a bold and somewhat stupid move. Look at this. They're, they're going in. Two on three. Attack. Two on four. Man, and disrupt just disruptor just glitched him back. It's called, or what's it called? Uh, glimpsed. They never miss. He has glimpsed him back to where he was four seconds previously, which basically meant that he could not escape. Oh, got him! Service. Well, the assassinate and the sniper. Uh, the sniper's assassinate and the silencer right click is too much. And oh man, look at that! Illuminate took down three. Under attack. Three heroes just so Radiant low. structures are fortified. And it, oh, if this disruptor went back in, he could potentially die. Yeah, those, those illuminates are so powerful, but they they take forever to channel up. That's kind of the only reason that they're not on And you should be able to hear them if you're wondering how to counter them. You should be able to hear them charging up, so you don't want to pay attention to the noise. So you should be good. Silence is getting some good gold going. Right now, Life Stealer is actually ahead of Silencer now by 500. That's a pretty big deal. Um, let's go ahead and look at the XP chart as a team. Looks like the Radiant was ahead and it swung down to the Dire. Now it's coming back up. It's pretty close. Only wow, only like no! zero oh. zero XP difference now. And the gold, the Dire is in the lead, and that's probably due to Life Stealer's jungling. Why they are in the even though the Radiant is ahead, 14 to 11 kills. Water. Man, that Illuminate just does so much damage. It's insane. Shadow Demon spamming his abilities. And Tinker re responding with some missiles. Sinking missiles. Which do 325 damage to two different targets. That's actually quite a bit of damage. So, yeah. So rearm basically that allows him to reset his abilities. Basically, so it allows him to do two marching machines. And what's that? Omni Knight might go down. Life Stealer is still BB right now. Oh, good use of the ultimate. Oh, we can get the life stealer in return. Oh, shadow, shadow demon's in trouble. Oh, he's gonna die. Oh, so close. Two for two right now, but these two are really low, and they're able to deny the tower, and that's a pretty big deal because that's a thousand gold that the dire team misses out on. One thing to keep in mind here is that. The Dire have managed to take down two towers, while the Radiant have not been able to kill a tower. Oh, they actually did take down a tower, sorry. Couldn't see it because it was missing. But, so it's it's actually two towers to one tower going down. That's not too big a deal. Take another look at the gold graph. As you can see, the Dire just went up big time again, because whenever a tower goes down, everyone on that team gets 200 gold, and the person who kills the tower actually gets 450 gold. Uh, except if you get denied, then your team only gets basically 100 gold apiece, which is a huge difference. You know, and it's kind of surprising that they actually have the tower lead, because this team has a Tinker. And Tinkers are usually just boss at countering with the anti-push. Like, they can push lanes back so easily. Look at this. The <laughs> Disruptor's taking this lane everywhere. What is he doing? I don't know. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, the levels here. XP per minute. The Life Stealer and Bounty Hunter are ahead, and Tinker is also ahead. Yeah, and Bounty Hunter is another great way to get gold. Oh, there's an action right here. Uh, oh, 
man, it's a close fight. Oh, oh disruptor. Oh my goodness, 20 health. He barely survives. Oh, what did he just do? Shadow, oh, Shadow Demon must have poisoned him or something. What's what's Shadow Demon's ability that allows him to poison? Uh, duration. Soul Catcher. Shadow Poison. Yeah, he must have used Shadow Poison on him. Pull off the kill even though he died himself. Omni Knight is going to try to heal. He's repelling. Uh, sniper right now so that he can't get killed, at least not as easily. Bounty Hunter's going in, he wants that sniper Shut kill. Oh, uh, he healed him. That's that's actually a beautiful play. Now what this this red line, uh, red circle around Tinker means basically that he is tracked. Which gives his team vision of him, as well as enables all the people near him to have bonus movement speed. Also, if you kill that guy who is tracked, allows you to, oh, the silence is going down. Uh, if you kill the guy who is tracked, you get bonus gold. And it's actually quite a bit of gold, depending on the level of someone who is tracked. Tinker goes down. Looks like these guys are all really low. They need to heal up. Lifesteal is at 20 HP. The bear is really low. The lone druid has the ability to uh, summon a bear. And uh, the spirit bear, and basically he had the spirit bear has enormous HP, like just crazy high HP. And uh, the spirit bear does not have that much of uh, attack speed, but oh yeah, attack damage only 73. You can see right here, but he has just insane health. So it allows the lone druid to tank, uh, allows the lone druid to go ahead and do some jungling. And you can see the, lone, the bear is actually really fast too. 340 base move speed with the uh, phase boots giving him even Radiance top more tower of a bonus is under speed. Attack. And these abilities aren't lost when the bear dies. He can always resummon the bear and the bear still has the same Dying units. Structures or, uh, are fortified. The bear always has the same items. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. And you see here they're pushing this lane Dyer's and Tinker is just doing that to kill this wave. Let's illuminate. That this wave is gonna go down really quickly. Looks like they're gonna be able to save this tower. That's good. I, mean, I think this game is gonna basically come down to is Life Stealer and Lone Druid gonna get the crazy farm they need? And if the sniper and the silencer can get the farm they need. The sniper especially is one of the hardest carries in the game. Let's see how the sniper's got right now. The sniper has a Yashi, he's probably gonna go for a Mantis style. Uh, you can see right here, uh, you've got the Yasha, and you need an ultimate orb and the recipe, and you can make yourself a Mantis style. Mantis style basically just clones two of your units. Oh, he almost died, wow. Tracks the silencer, um, P9. No, okay. Man, this bounty hunter could be in trouble if they have a way to reveal him. Oh, they revealed him. Oh, where's he going? You should know that he's being revealed, he needs to just run. Dead. Kill shot. Sniper just uses his assassinate ability, which is a great way of finishing targets. As you saw in that situation. Just take your homing missiles. Interesting. Essentially a big team fight here. Omni Knight's around low on health, he just heals himself right back up. Yeah, so basically it's going to be Life Stealer and Lone Druid versus Silencer and Sniper late game. And I mean, Tinker's going to also be a factor in there, but uh, he doesn't have to get too crazy at farm. It's more of his abilities, the March of the Machines, that's just really excellent. Oh, Sniper! Sniping him! Look at him go, that was impressive. Oh, the Silencer dug down. The, uh, the ultimate by Omni Knight there, keeping everybody alive for a short period of time, basically makes them Oh, great job. Disruptor catches him and also uses his uh, Thunder Strike uh, in Kinetic Field, basically. Oh, Static Storm in Kinetic Field there. It's a regen rune. 
Uh, these ruins are ruins are spawned every two minutes. Along Dyer's the top and the bottom right here. Attack. Right here and right here. And uh, what they do is they just give you... Oh, Banner might go down. He's gonna snipe him. Boom! Parking shot! So these uh, these regen runes basically they give you lots Dyer's of health and there's all kinds of different runes. There's a regen rune. There's oh that's so unfortunate. He's got a regen rune that he gets spammed by illuminate. Um, there's all kinds of runes. There's a regen rune. There's a double damage rune. The haste rune which makes you run faster. And all of these things basically are able to be picked up and basically enhance your hero ability. Uh, it's your ability, your ability to survive or fight or middle tower all those has things. Fallen. Um, let's talk about the shop for just a second. Each hero has the ability to put six items into his inventory. And you can combine items. Like, for example, if you buy a Yasha, which is actually these three items put together. Buy a Yasha, then you buy an ultimate orb, which is that item by itself. And then you buy the recipe, and if you have all three of those items in your inventory, or if you have two of them and you buy the third item, it'll combine into the top tier item. Which is, I mean, at first when I first started playing Dota, I did not understand how to freaking use the secret shop, or the shop, which was a big deal. And uh, the important thing, too, to notice is that some items over here, you just cannot get uh, from the normal shop. Like, this is the normal shop right here. And you have to go to this shop over here, the secret shop, to be able to pick up some items. These are basically the special items. And if you more, like bigger items that are more expensive typically, they give you a uh, bigger edge. And they're usually one component of the biggest devices, uh, or the biggest items in the game, like the heart, the Daedalus, uh, the staff, you know, the sheep stick. Um, there's a bunch of different, uh, there's a bunch of different items that you have to go to the secret shop in order to get. No. Uh oh, these guys are getting dominated down here. Omni Knight, man, he's in trouble. He needs to get out of there. Oh, good job, though. No, oh. He reverses it around. Tinkers marching the machines. It's brutal. Life's either didn't even attack him. He probably should have. Sniper. Oh, he does not kill Bounty Hunter. 86 health. Barely getting away. Uh. One thing I will say about Dota is that if you want to get into Dota, it is very satisfying. It, there's Dyer's such deep gameplay that I mean, you just end up having to learn so many heroes. And once, but once you get the knowledge, oh, this Sansa's in trouble. He's trapped in by the creeps. Is he gonna be able to get out? Looks like it. He's got his teammates coming up, so he'll be fine. Um, basically, like Dota is a huge time to learn. Like I have spent. Uh, probably in the area of 150 to 200 hours in the last month, basically learning Dota, Radiant learning all the different heroes, and learning their abilities and their strengths and their weaknesses. And I was going to take the out. Well, Druid is going to need to recall his bear if he can. Oh, he might even be able to get a kill. Oh, the. Oh, wait. I thought he was TPing out. Uh, he must have got a head canceled. Oh, this bear and the Druid are going to go down. There's holds his arm, oh, and he's going to go down. Tinker's uh, laser finishing him off there. Uh, life steal. What items has he got? Looks like he's got some quarter staffs, which means he's probably going to be going for the orchid of malevolence, uh, which silences your target for five seconds and amplifies the damage it takes by thirty. Like that's just insane. So. You're able to take down enemy units if you, that you're focusing on so quickly. It's not that great in a team fight, but for one on one and for ganking and surprising people, it's just insanely good. And I mean, it can't be good in a team fight to silence their like main, the main opposing player that's uh, the main spellcaster. So, but other than that, it's not really very useful. The so Lumace is going to spam down this way. Look at that! Look at that damage. That's just insane. So much damage. Life Stealer here, jungling in the offensive uh, jungle, coming across the river, stealing some gold. Which it's it's pretty important. The silencer couldn't cannot get this until the one minute mark. Notice that the creeps do respawn every minute. So here they just pop back right here, and uh, it's possible to stack these creeps. 
If and by stacking, you get multiple camps together at one creep wave. Um, I'm trying to. Oh, looks like we got a team fight going on. So let me go ahead. The life seal is going in. He has his orchid now. He still hasn't used it. Let's go ahead and use that thing really badly. Life seal going after sniper. Oh, and Druid's almost down. Shadow Demon's low. So far, Disruptor's the only one that's fallen, but several heroes nearly died there. Life Stealer, oh, Sniper went down. Life Stealer is just got some really, really high amount of damage, doing 200 damage a hit. Plus, if he's using his Orchid, he does 30, 30 bonus damage. Uh, Omni Knight here has got the gem, which means that the Bounty Hunter can no longer uh, cloak and run away. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's got track on both of them, and so, sorry, yeah, basically, oh, Lifesteal, this is, this is bold, right here. No. That was really bold of him, he had such low health. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is he gonna be able to get out of this? He needs to do some life stealing. Dyer's bottom oh my is goodness. Oh, oh Life Stealer got killed by a neutral! This little guy killed Life Stealer, stole the kill from Silencer. That is just huge. Some people are LOLing and spectators. The Keeper of the Light go ahead and buying back. Uh, and that's kind of important so you can push back the lanes to prevent them from. Uh, preventing towers from going down. One thing I did not know when I first started playing Dota is that if you try to attack a tower without a creep wave, bottom tower uh, is under attack. the tower automatically heals itself. And it's because of uh, backdoor protection, it's called. Uh, now, one thing you'll notice here is that, just notice, look at how people are just... Look at how these creeps are melting away right now. Watch this bear. This bear has got a radiance, it's called, and he's doing 45 burn damage a second. These ancients can't be burned because they're immune to magic. But whenever he goes near a creep wave, look for that burn, and he does 45 damage a second. Basically, anytime the bear's going to be near anybody on the map, he's going to be doing lots of damage. Um, which is pretty awesome. And it also just increases 60 plus damage per attack. So look at this. It's like, it's like they're melting, like the sun is just melting them. It's a really cool effect, I think it's awesome. I love the graphics on Dota too. Sniper's gonna get some kills. What does Sniper have? Sniper's going for Manta and then Daedalus it looks like. Manta straight into Daedalus. Um, so what are some mistakes that some noobs make right at the beginning? Uh, it's kind of an intro guide. One of the biggest mistakes that noobs get is they don't get regen when they go out to farm at the beginning of the game. You want to get regen, you want to get some basic stat items like a few, like two or three branches. You want to get basically some mana regen and some health regen, some tangos and some salve. Like at least like one tango and one salve usually. Uh, we got Lone Druid mining some ancients here. Uh, we got Radiant kind of balling up over here. I'm not sure going to try to push. Um, another mistake that a lot of noobs make is they do not prioritize boots. Basically, after you get regen and you get those, uh, after you get regen and you get the basic stat items like some iron branches or maybe like some slippers or a uh, bracer or something like that, you want to get your boots right away. Basically, boots are a necessity because whenever you're being attacked and you need to run away, you need to have boots to be able to just run away. Oh man. Omni Knight's tracked right now. Life Stealer. Cursed. Oh, the sniper finishes them off. The sniper is hitting really hard right now. At 200 damage. A shot plus crit. You get one more shot on Shadow Demon. He's down. Silencer kills him. Bounty Hunter is almost dead. Get out, buddy. You need to get out. Oh, the power of Omni Knight keeping everybody alive. It's insane. Omni Knight is doing a really good job supporting. He's Omni Knight's getting dust. Basically, dust allows you to see invisible heroes, and that's a huge deal when you've got like a, an enemy like Bounty Hunter running around, you know, ganking people left and right. Oh, this bear wants to get in and steal the Aegis. 
They don't let him know. So who picked up the Aegis? Sniper picks up the Aegis. I would say that's probably the best call because he is probably going to be the most farmed. He's your hardest carry. And if he goes down, the damage on your team goes down significantly. Uh, the Sniper is probably saving for buyback, but he's going to need to get his Daedalus pretty soon. He only needs about a thousand more gold and he'll have his Daedalus. So he's going down to farm. Uh, basically, basically what he's doing right now is getting enough, trying to get enough gold to get his items that he needs really badly to, to win the game. Um, now, one thing you're saying, what is this thing? Like, what? Why were they all fighting around it? This is the Roshan. It's basically a ginormous dragon slash beast thing that when it's when he dies, he drops an Aegis of Immortal. Immortality, Aegis of the Immortal, and basically what it does is it brings you back to life if you die, uh, basically preventing you from dying from one death. And so if your team is focusing down the sniper, for example, he's got the Aegis, he's going to be able to survive that. Oh man, so close! Oh the Omni Knight, oh the Illuminate, it's going back and forth, oh Keeper goes down! The double kill for the Radiant, and the sniper is... Oh, close to dying. Justice. Omni Knight healing him back up over and over again. And the Shadow Demon doing some... Looks like that the poison? I think that's the poison right there. Yeah, Shadow Poison right there. This is a lot of creeps right here. They really need the Keeper of the Light to kill this. Like, one Keeper Blast and all these guys are dead. Dyer's bottom tower. Wow, look at that. Shadow Demon poison. Oh, once he had enough uh, stacks on there, it was over. Now the Shadow Demon, he gets hexed. You might be wondering what just happened to him. Why did he turn into a pig? As you can see right here, the Tinker has a Scythe of Vice, which basically turns a target unit into a harmless critter for three and a half seconds. And uh, so after, so he's going to be able to turn him into a Scythe of Vice again. Oh, he does not. Oh, he glyphs him back. Well, Druid died. That's the power of the Disruptor right there. Um, so, Tinker and the Scythe of Vice. Oh man, uh, Scythe of Ice is just such a good device for, or such a good item for disabling the enemy carry. You just do one Scythe of Ice on a lone hero or onto the hero. Oh, here it comes. Oh, see, there's another Scythe of Ice. Uh, Tinker using that Scythe again. Oh, and he just has this rearm ability and it rearms his items too. Oh, that's insane. I did not know that about Tinker. That, that makes the Scythe of Ice so much better. Because you're able to just do rearm and spam your science of ice. That's amazing. It's pretty smart. He can disrupt himself to get his own illusions that he can control. It's kind of like a, your own temporary mantis style. That's pretty cool. Learning all kinds of things. And you know, I'm learning a lot more than I would just watching a game by itself. I'm going to have to ask more. I'm going to learn a lot more. You just like really pay attention to the detail. Tinker blinking in, hexing him up, and oh, he attacks. I was doing a lot of damage. Just shot. He's attacking. Oh no. Okay, must have been stop animation. But here's a sniper. Oh my goodness, that freaking illuminate. Man, having that army knight is so good against the illuminate. He can heal those weakened heroes right up. This sniper is doing so much damage to the bear. Sniper kills him. Oh, and bounty hunter goes down. This life stealer should really be fucking the thing. The sniper. The sniper is so squishy, but he's doing so much damage. Go ahead and highlight the sniper. Yeah, the sniper's got his Daedalus and a Manta style, so he's doing tons of damage. As Daedalus, you might be wondering what's up with that. Uh, every one out of every four shots, 25% chance allows you to do critical damage, which multiplies your current damage by 275%. So you're talking about getting, you're normally doing 240 damage right now. 
if you've got a Daedalus you're talking about doing 600, 700 damage per hit, which is just insane, especially if you shoot as fast as the Sniper does. Though, the Sniper is not really shooting that fast, because he actually does not have many attack speed items. He's only got the man style, and he also doesn't have the power treads, which allows you to shoot faster. But I, I prefer building power treads on Sniper. Just because it allows you to shoot faster, allows you to switch between, gives you 8 extra damage, uh, as well as 8 attack speed if you have an ability. Super smart play by Silencer there, not running. If he tried running, he would just been trapped anyway. He just decided to just keep attacking. Oh, the Keeper! Oh my goodness. Look at this. Okay, let's take a look at the kills really quick. Who is carrying the team? really well. Basically, it's Silencer and Sniper, just as I predicted. Dyer's um, top and Tinker kind of helping out as well. Disruptor's dying a lot, 6 and 8, though. He's carrying the other team. A bounty Hunter's died 13 times. Brutal. Dyer's taking the booty smacked right now. His Life Stealer's going in, but he just doesn't have what he needs. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the last year just does not. He needs to go in with his teammates. He's really durable. He can take a lot Dyer's of punishment. But he, if he's taking punishment by himself, he's still going to die. Are under attack. Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon's in trouble. He's gone. Top has fallen. Yep. Omni Knight just spammed his. Uh, what's it called? Purification. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Silence uh, what he got. He's got a rod of access which slows the target unit and it, it adds damage. Then you got the Orchid of Malevolence. Man, that does uh, silences. And on top of his silencing abilities, he also gets more silence Dyer's attack speed damage and intelligence. That's Dyer's just insane. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. No such oh, He's just spamming Illuminate from the safety of his home. <laughs> and it doesn't even matter because Omni Knight has to go. Okay, there's the Ancient dying for the Dire team. So that gives the Radiant did win. Let's take a look at the kills. And we're going to have the scoreboard screen pop up in a little bit. And uh, we'll take a look at the XP and gold ratio of each team. Ah. Ah. These items right here, uh, each person's getting an item here, or at least three three out of the ten people got items. Sometimes you just get randomly assigned items. It's pretty awesome. And you can customize your hero with all these items that you get over time. So let's take a look at the gold. The gold for a minute. It looks like Sniper was the head with Silencer close behind him. And you've got the Dire team just really struggling to get their gold up. Lifestealer had the highest gold for Dire, as you can see. But it just wasn't enough. He kept dying and didn't, you know, these other guys just, you know, keep the lone druid never got his items that he desperately needed uh, to be able to help the, the life stealer out in his team fights. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this cast. Uh, Quadrant, I'll be doing some, uh, I'll be doing some hero guides in the near future. I love Invoker. It's my favorite character, uh, at least right now. And uh, so I'll be doing an Invoker guide pretty soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for subscribing.